And so why does Dijkstra fail for negative edge weights? So classically, the single source shortest path problems define where the edge weights are not negative or positive. But let's consider the broader case when the edge weights are allowed to take on a negative value. So why is it that Dijkstra's algorithm is incapable of handling this situation more broadly? Well, I'm going to consider a basic counterexample. This is a very simple counterexample. We're going to make a we're going to have the source S here. We're going to have a vertex U and a vertex V. What we're going to do is I'm going to make a constant C. It's going to be greater than zero. And I'm going to assign the edge weights like this. So I want to first, before I get too crazy with this, I'm going to assign these to be C, C plus one, and say C plus one. So I'm just going to keep all of them right now positive because C is greater than zero. So if you were to use Dijkstra's algorithm here, what would happen? Well, it would begin by doing what? Well, it'll, it'll pick this edge to extend for the shortest path tree, right? And the blob would consist of S and U. And then it'll update the distance from here to there potentially. No, does, does it relax this edge? This one? No, no, because it'd be C plus C plus one, which is larger than C plus one. So in this situation, you would have it where the next time around, it will, the blob would devour this vertex V and it would do it by this edge and you would end up with the shortest path tree, right? But notice that when I first selected U, I did this because this was the least weight edge from, and then it's going from S to U which happens to be the shortest distance from S to U. Well, whenever we worked with Dijkstra's algorithm, we always went, we either stay put or we move forward, right? That's the underlying assumption that is made when we use Dijkstra's algorithm. So let's make this a little bit more funky. Let's change this edge weight from C plus one to be minus C plus one. So, is it still true that SU, the path SU, is in fact the shortest SU path? Well, look at it. Well, let's see. We have this other path here, C plus one plus minus C plus one, or negative C plus one. What's this? That's zero, right? That's strictly less than C. So this is actually not computing the shortest path from S to U, which invalid, if, if you go back to our proof of correctness, the part in our stage in our proof relied on this fact that all the edge weights were not negative, right? This is why, because what happens is I could potentially have it where when I commit from S to U, it was because that in fact was the shortest distance from S to U at that time. However, that doesn't mean that later on I could potentially take back the distance that I could have traveled by using another route. Because remember, we either stay put or we move forwards. So the actual shortest path from S to U is actually this one right here. But this is where it gets even stranger. That's assuming it's a simple path, right? So if I wanted to compute the shortest simple path from S to V, I would go from S to U to V, right? However, if I wanted to compute a simple path, just presume that's the case, presume I wanted that, which is what Dijkstra would do, by the way, in this case, it would, it would actually extend another pathway off over here, right? So he would say, hey, look, uh, if I relax, would I relax on this edge? Yeah, in this case I would, because C plus negative C plus one, that is less than zero, right? That would be negative one, which is less than C plus one, so it would relax and then it would use this. 
And that, that would be the supposed shortest path tree that it computes. Which, this, this isn't going to cut it, right? Because notice that this does not contain the shortest path from S to U. That's not right. In fact, in this case, if I wanted to compute the, sim the simple paths from S to U and the simple path from S to V, each their own shortest versions of them, if I take the union of their edges, um, it's not quite clear if that's going to end up being a tree anymore. Do you see that? So notice that the shortest path from S to V is this way, right? The shortest path from S to U is this way. If you take the union of those edges, and keep in mind, those are the only shortest paths. There aren't other ones. It forms a cycle. It doesn't form a tree anymore. So the exist the, the does not exist a shortest path tree here. In fact, it's even worse than that. That's presuming you're looking for a simple path. If you wanted just a path, notice that if I were to just get anywhere near here, Notice that I could just go back and forth from U to V like this. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, creating an ever increasingly negative path. And I could just stop whenever I wanted to, but if I do, I'll miss out on an even better path. Meaning that in these situations, when there exists a way to go back and forth like this, which is something that a non-simple path you're capable of doing, because it's just a walk, right? I could go back and forth, back and forth, over and over again. That's sufficient to say, hey, look, there is no shortest path tree in this case. In fact, there does not exist a shortest path. But yeah, that's why Dijkstra's algorithm fails for negative edge weights on undirected graphs.